Yeah, we're back on the Sportsmax Zone and we're going to talk some football now. We continue to track the Caribbean Americas Soccer Classic currently being held in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's a sunshine state where the best schoolboy football talents from Jamaica and Tobago are representing the region. Gerard Morrisili has the latest. Day two of the Casa Youth Soccer Classic gave us a chance to see both the defending champions Inter Miami on the 19th and the Jamaica Select team in action. The first game of the doubleheader saw Inter Miami clash with Plantation FC, who needed a win to at least give themselves a chance to play in a third place game on Sunday after losing to Tobago on day one. From the kickoff, Inter Miami took the lead through Reggae Boys under 20 player Kobe Thomas. From this point on, it was a Christian Ortiz show. He scored two goals in the first half and then another after the break to register the first hat trick of the tournament. Inter Miami coming out as 4 0 winners. Yeah, obviously, it was a really good start. It's always great to score in the first minute of any game. That kind of set the momentum. But I thought we had a really uh, productive first half. Obviously, made a lot of changes in the second half and uh, pleased, pleased to start off the tournament in this fashion. The fans were eagerly anticipating game two of this doubleheader, which featured Rush Select Academy and the Jamaica All Schools team. The game started fast with Rush pressing from the off. However, their tactics worked against them. The Jamaicans taking the lead through some pressing of their own and the skills of marksman Kahim Dixon. 1-0. Even with the lead, the Jamaicans were not allowed to settle at any point and that paid off for their opponents after 16 minutes, 1-1. And, and that causes a goal. While the Jamaicans were struggling to figure out the speed of the artificial turf, Rush continued to press and were duly awarded with a second goal, 2-1, after 33 minutes. Oh, that's not good. That's going to be a goal. That's most that became 3-1 just four minutes later, and, and the Jamaica partisan Jamaican in crowd in shocked. Halftime, Jamaica All Schools 1, Rush Select 3. Watch the mat now. During the break, the Jamaican team's coaching staff made two changes that paid off as early as the 41st minute with Kahim Dixon scoring again. The Jamaicans made more changes and took charge of the second half. Late in the game, they thought they had fought back to earn a point, but the flag was up for offside. 3 2, the final score. The surface have a lot to do with it. You know, first with some of us playing on it, and the pace of the game also. You know, we, we have to get used to this type of surface and the quickness and the speed of which the players play on it, the opponent play on it. Um, they pressed us a lot. We didn't comfortably play from out of the back of the pitch. And I think we should have adjusted in going long and going into channel. We did that in the second half, and as it be a fruit, we got some counter attack on them. And, and I think we should have even got a point out of this game tonight. Yes, yeah, so the Jamaican team losing on Wednesday night and the Inter Miami team, one of the host teams, uh, coming up with a victory. Phil Riley, our producer of the Schoolboy Football and uh, producing the coverage there, now joins us live to talk about what happened last night. Phil, welcome back to the Sports Mat Zone. Um, great to have you on again. And uh, a disappointing result for the Reggae Boys. We heard Lenny High, the coach, suggesting that the, the AstroTurf, in, to, to, to some extent, uh, may not have or may have contributed to, to the team not doing as well as they could have, the Jamaica Select team? Yes, yes Lance, they couldn't, they, they couldn't pass, a, pass a ball in the first half. They were struggling. The team was just pressing them the entire time. They gave up two late goals in the first half. They just didn't look good at all, at all in the first half. They, they were a step slow every, every single time. Even though they took the lead, they were just behind, behind, behind and they gave up two goals there, 3-1 half-time. Um, they made a few changes at the half, but it didn't, it didn't materialize. I thought they got the equalizer late on, but the referees here, let's just say the referees here are a little different from 
in the Caribbean. That's all <laughs> I would say. Uh, it was ruled out as an offside goal, was it? Yes, it was ruled out. Dixon told me that they didn't call him offside, but the player who, who took the initial shot, that's um, Devon Davis from McGrath, he took the initial shot, but he, he dribbled into the box. I was wondering how he was offside. Yeah. So we'd have to ask the referees about that one, but they almost got back in the game. They have a tough task now, uphill, because Lord Hill will play, Rush will, will beat Jamaica last night. If, if there's a result for any of those teams, Jamaica might, might not make, make it to the final, final game. But they're still the third place game. But they're hoping for the result to be favorable in the opening game. They will play ingenious, an ingenious team, which is largely Jamaican. So I, I don't know if that's an advantage to them or not. But we'll see what happens. We should, we should have two interesting, exciting games tonight. Yeah, and the Tobago team have been off for the last couple of days. But they will go into their next fixture with uh, some their, their morale, bo their morale boosted by what happened in their opener. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I spoke to the keeper today, the goalkeeper. He had a good, a good tournament last year. He came back. He had a good first game. He, they're they're in really good spirits. They did some pool work, you know, some recovery work. They are up and ready for for Inter. So we'll see how that goes. And they, that match will be played at the, the Inter Stadium training facility, sparkling facility. We are looking forward to going there tomorrow. And I'm sure the, the Tobago players are as well. Yeah, and you did suggest, Phil, and the coach, Kyle Joseph, um, did agree as well that this Tobago unit is, is stronger this year than the one that turned up last year. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They, they look better. They are better players. They are stronger players, older players. They cut the squad. So they did, last year they carried about 32 players. This year they, they carried about 20, 22 players. Very experienced players, players who look like they have skill. You know, last year it was more of a, a let's take a trip, let's go to the mall kind of thing, let's enjoy our time. Now they want to win. And, and they want to. Last year, Inter knocked them for five. So we'll see what happens this year. Yeah, quickly about Inter because they had a good win last night. Of course, Inter Miami is the club that uh, Lionel Messi plays for and Luis Suarez is about to join them in a, in a, in a couple of days. How, how does that unit look? They look good. They look good. Um, Kobe, Thoma Kobe Thomas is Jamaican. is on that team and he looked good last night. And, and we're, looking, we're, we're looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, Phil, go ahead. And, and they, their opponent... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feedback in my ear, so I, I... Yeah. Yeah, continue. We're listening, though. So, so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to that. We might have a surprise for you tomorrow. I don't know if it's messy. I don't know what it will be. But, <laughs> but when, we, when, we, when we go live tomorrow, you'll see what happens. Well, we'll we, we, we be looking forward to that, and our, our viewers are now on the edge of their seats because Friday's Sports Max Zone show uh, by the promise of, of Phil Riley is, is expected to be something special. But quickly, Phil, again, about the opportunity for these players... No, it players. might be something special. <laughs> <laughs> the, the opportunity for the players from Tobago and, and, and Jamaica as, as young players, they are teenagers. A lot of them uh, probably have uh, uh, professional aspirations for the game. And uh, I know that there are not many AstroTurf surfaces that uh, these players would have played on. Um, you know, so this is a, a different kind of experience, experience for them. But isn't that part of what they'll be judged by, their adaptability to different conditions? Yes, they will be. But greater still, it's the pace of the game, Lance. These, these players, these clubs here, the, the players don't give you a second on the ball. As they lose the ball, they want to win it back. I, I heard last year the, the coach, Victor Pastor of Inter, he said three seconds, three seconds to get it back, three seconds to get it back. So he kept pressuring the players to win back the ball each time. We are not used to that in Jamaica. We are used to watching if a stone touches the ball or if the ball bottles up or, or anything like that. But... The, 
but the, the ground is true and the, the players are fast. Yeah. Can you talk to us about the size of the field? Because the angle that we are looking at at the, at the highlights is, is, the, is the field, um, the full international size field. No, it's not. It's not a full international size field, but it's it's pretty, it's pretty big. It's it's big enough. Mm. Okay, and, and yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I think we. It's it's wide. It's it's not as long as as. Maybe Jason can give you a shot. You can you can see. Yeah, well, as, as I said, just looking at the highlights, you know, it it it, it did it look. But I I know that your the the, the coverage, the camera angle and the, the the elevation of the camera does give you the feeling of it looking a little bit congested but um, hard to judge from here but yeah it, it, it does look reasonable size but during the highlights it, 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 it looked a little it looked a little squeezed for, for me so that's why I asked you the question about about the size of the field but uh, Phil this is really as we have said before a great opportunity no. for young players from the region to uh, get their feet wet in this kind of uh, experience with, as you said, players who play very, very quickly, give them uh, very, very little time on the ball, so their decision-making has to be fast and, uh, and immediate. But uh, I, I suppose that every player that would have played in this uh, CASA series would feel as if they would have gained something from this experience, whether they win or lose. Yes. Yes, they would have. And, and, and Lance... Every team here wants to play the Jamaicans. They look forward to playing the Jamaicans. They come to see the Jamaicans. They want to play them because they, they watch them on Sportsmax. They want to see them play, and they want to beat them. <laughs> All right, Phil. Well, we, we certainly um, will look forward to having the link up on Friday. As you said, um, you have something in store for us. And I, I, I guess you have piqued the interest of our viewers and I, I guess our presenters as well, because Mariah and, and Ricardo are, I think, as anxious as I am to see what the link up will be like tomorrow. But thanks, Phil. And uh, tell Jason hi for us. And uh, we link again tomorrow. Yes, I'll tell him, and I think we'll we'll be taking some of the players to KFC tomorrow, because they the Jamaicans will have a day off tomorrow, so we take a trip to KFC. <laughs> oh, okay, Phil. <laughs> okay, KFC, of course, one of the sponsors of Schoolboy Football in Jamaica. We'll be back with more on this one after this. Can they?